Okay, so it's been a while since you've seen me sit out here at the well. This is where I store those generators. And I wanted to talk a bit more about the, this Paralink. Now, I've made two videos where I talked about the Paralink, but I didn't have it. And then I made a video where I had the Paralink, but I didn't really talk about it because I was busy welding to test the Paralink to make sure it worked. So now that I have it, now that I've tested it, I suppose I should talk about it a little bit. So this is the Paralink. Now, it has a little knob on it. I don't work for these companies. I don't sell their company, their products or anything. So this sits on top and there's a little clamp that hooks around the handle. Now these are Champion generators. I do believe you can buy these, not, not Champion, but you can buy Paralinks for other generators. So like if you have two Hondas, I think you can buy a Paralink, but I don't know that for sure, so I don't want to talk uh, about something I don't really understand. However, I do know that Champion generators do sell these. Now there's two different types, um, and I don't have the numbers exactly correct, but I think you can buy this one, this Paralink, which is 30 amps. It says right here, 30 amps. For generators that run 2,000 to 3,000 watts. And so this one's 2,500 and this one's 2,500. And then you can buy one for generators that are 2,800 watts. So just a little bit bigger than mine and 3,000 watts. I think that's what it is, something like that. And I think that one, instead of 30 amps, is 50 amps. So these are primarily sold for the RV people, the people who own RVs and, and like to do what they call boondocking. Out there in the middle of nowhere, there's no hookups. So you hook this up to your RV so you can get 120 volt power at 30 amps. Now you go to an RV park, you can plug into a 30 amp thing that they have at the RV park, or a 50 amp, or a 120 amp. Some of them have just one, so you have to buy kind of a reducer, which is what this is. This reduces it from a 30 amp down to a 100, or 20 amp, I should say. And I guess there's two different sizes, or two different styles of plug-ins that I'm again not really sure I know that I can buy it and I almost bought it but I decided to get this one because it looked sturdier that's the only reason it looked like it was beefier with the plugs and so now what this does is I guess I should turn the one around so you can front in so what it does is you plug this wire these two wires to one generator so the red goes into red, the black goes into black, and then you have two more wires over here that plug into this generator, which is on the front side. You turn both generators on, and you now have 30 amps. So what you did, you doubled the power of your generator. To make things simplistic, I'm not gonna talk about 20 amps, but typically running amps is 15 amps. The 20 amps is peak amps, 15 amps is running amps. So for example, when the well starts up, it starts up really high, I think almost 2,000 watts, and then drops down to 800 watts. So that's what the peak is. It, it does that for about a second or two, and then drops down. So like I said, these are used primarily for RVs. Well, if you really think about my life, I kind of live like an RVer. I have a an RV that runs off electric that I produce. My whole system's set up that way. The water tank. The water tank is hooked up exactly, basically, like an RV tank. Except mine's 275 gallons and an RV is... Uh, I don't know, the biggest I've ever seen was 40 gallons, so I, I don't know how big they come. So again, don't want to talk uh, unintelligently, but that's the biggest I've ever seen. And so it has an RV pump. Mine has an RV pump and a, the RV pump water from the tank it's through your plumbing system in your RV. Same thing with mine. The water heater, a lot of 
RVs now are kind of con con converting, and RVers I should say, not RVs, are converting from a gas powered, electric powered uh, water heater tank to a tankless water heater like I've got. So I'm set up like that. So that makes sense to have this. Now, the thing is, is I have two inverters down there. I have a 1,000 watt inverter and I have a 2,000 watt inverter. And the 1,000 watt inverter, whether there's anything hooked into it or not, runs one amp every hour. So my solar panels charge the batteries and chip batteries or slash solar panels discharge into the inverter. The inverter sends electric, 120 volt, 15 amps, I don't think it's 15 amps, whatever that converts down to, I guess maybe 7 amps, 8 amps, something like that. And so that comes up to the house. And I can run my freezer off it. I'm actually quite surprised how much I can run off that little 1,000 watt. I mean, we run a laptop and we charge our batteries, we run a freezer, a couple fans. I mean, it, it does pretty good. So we've never been without power on normal operations. Now we have eight batteries, so let's just exclude how much electric I've stored or how much electric I'm producing. I'm just talking about how much electric that I can retrieve from my inverters. Same here, how much electric can I retrieve from this? And then I have another uh, inverter, it's a 2000 watt inverter, which runs the well just fine. I ex already explained that. It, it peaks at around 2000 watts or under, and then drops down to 800 watts. And so that 2000 watt inverter handles that just fine. And I've only stressed it out once when I hooked the welder into it. That's the only time it, it tripped on me. I've never really had, since I got the new sine wave inverters, had a problem with electric. If Carolyn wants to run the vacuum, that's about the only time we have a problem is with the vacuum. If I shut the freezer off, we can run the vacuum off the 1,000 watt, but it just makes more sense most of the time just to switch the house from the 1,000 watt inverter over to 2,000 watt so she can run the vacuum. And we, if the freezer kicks on, then we still have plenty of power. I'm hoping all this kind of makes sense. So I've never seen a point to having 3,000 watts of electricity. Well, let's see, it's not 3,000, it's a, it's 120 times 30. So is that, I'm trying to do YouTube math, I think that's 3,600 watts, but don't, don't quote me, whatever it is. So that is a lot of electricity. So, and I'll type into the screen what the correct answer is if I've said it wrong. So I don't ever see the need to have this much electricity. Now we also have another generator down there, and it's a little 1500 watt one, I mean it's very small. And I just run that because it just sips gas. It's a little power smart, I think it's made in China. And it starts up on one pull every time, unless it's below like, I don't know, 30 degrees or so, then it takes two pulls. And I run that just to run the battery charger. So on a cloudy day, if we're not getting enough electric from the solar, I can run that little power smart generator on a and then it plug a battery charger into it so you're a car battery charger and it charges the batteries at 25 amps then i can also hook up another battery charger to that with 10 amps so i get a total of 35 amps of battery charger from that little generator and like i said it just sips gas so it makes more sense to run that one than it does this one also, it's a lot cheaper. That generator, I don't mind wearing it out. I think it's already two years old, or it's coming up on two years old. But when you have a generator that's, you know, nearly $600, you don't want to wear them out. So it just made sense to go ahead and buy that one. When Carolyn's son came to stay with us for a while in the camper, we we actually ran that one quite a bit because I was at the time converting my solar panels, upgrading them, making improvements, and, and now we don't have any electrical issues. So it just never made sense to buy this. But like I said in a previous video, the 
lawnmower repair shop hobby thing that I got going on. We were starting to clash with electricity. We just, we weren't getting enough electricity. There's several things that are taking quite a bit of power. The, the angle grinder takes quite a bit of power. Now I can run that off one generator, so it wasn't a big deal. I can run, I also have a power washer that I can run off this one generator. So again, not a big deal. Now, I do have an extension cord that I can run from the shed down there where my solar panels are all the way up to here to the house so I made it it's I think 10 10 gauge outdoor wires all it is so it's basically this stuff it is this stuff is what it is so that I can plug in down there and I can run the like I said the the angle grinder and the power washer off solar on a sunny day the problem is a lot of my work I do before the sun even pops up with all the trees that we have in the summertime, we don't get it very much electricity from the solar panels until about 9.30 in, in the morning. So I'm out there at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm not getting any electric, so I can't run it. So i got to have this generator to run the power washer and angle grinder. Now the welder, I've said in previous, those two videos before I bought the power link here, that I, I could weld off one generator but it really stressed the generator and I just didn't like that I looked it up and it said it was fine there was nothing going to happen to it but I just didn't like it it just worried me a little bit but I was welding with it but then one day Carolyn asked me to fix a hammer and I tried to fix that hammer on 75 amps so that took it from what I was normally running this generator at and it really stressed it out it kept tripping the breaker right here Oh no, this one, this one's the breaker. He kept tripping it. And I, I realized then I just don't have enough electricity. So I kept going through my head, what was I gonna do? I, I looked at other inverters, maybe a 3000 watt inverter, and they were really, really expensive. And I didn't mind paying the price if I needed to, but I, I just really didn't want to do that. So then I looked at just a regular, industrial strength generator that produce AC not inverter generators like this and I almost I mean I was actively searching for one I used one but still looking for one and I got to researching on YouTube and a lot of YouTubers were showing that industrial strength generators don't work because they don't have a consistent 60 Hertz but inverter generators produce very clean energy I mean, this is all new technology. I mean, it's, it's relatively new, it lasts maybe 10 years. These inverter generators have been really storming the market, but they, they get really expensive really quick. Now, I didn't tell anybody until recently that I had a second generator here. We've had it for almost two years. Bought it at the same time I bought that Power Smart down there, that little bitty one, as a backup. And I, I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want the trolls, you know, stepping all over my feet and telling me how terrible a person I am for having two generators, you know, the world's uh, poor and we all need to work together, you know, whatever they were going to say. So I just didn't say anything until I realized, hey, I have a second generator and I can hook it up and get clean energy, 3,000, 3,600, whatever that is, uh, watts, and that's going to power the, the welder. It, it was a perfect solution. So I'm glad I thought of it. I mean, I almost didn't. I would have been really upset if I'd have bought that generator, the industrial strength, and it didn't work. I mean, I guess I could have resold it. I'm just really glad I thought of this. And the thing is, is, before you go out and buy another generator, or you go out and buy uh, a Paralink, Make sure you need that much electricity. Now, I, I get, understand that RVs require that kind of electricity. So you run your air conditioner and your water heater and all the things you want to run, it can run all at once. The other thing is, is people say, why don't you just get a bigger generator? Well, you could. You can get, I think, a, well, I think you can get up to, well, maybe 4,200 watts I don't know the champion it's an inverter generator and they're huge and they're noisy they're not suitcase quiet generators but you can get those but the question is you're gonna spend just as much for one of those as you are two of these 
But th the thing is, is if you don't need that big generator and you're hauling it around and it's heavy, why, why do it? You're using more gas for nothing. Let's say you only need it to run a, I don't know, a light bulb. Well, it would be a lot cheaper to run this one than that big one. And then when you need the extra power, you know, it's hot one day and you decide, you know, I like to turn on the air conditioner, and then you can start the second one. And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to use this one as our primary one. I've marked it as one and I'll mark the other one as two. We're going to use this one as our primary one. So when I want to run the pressure washer or want to run the angle grinder, I'll run this one. We can run it off propane. And we're going to run both of them off propane. And then when I just need the welder, that's the only time I'm ever going to need it. Then I can just run, then I can run both of them. Then I'll keep this one living longer. Then, if we have to ever replace the first one, and then we'll just swap them out. We'll, we'll make this one the primary and the, the new one the backup. But regardless, I'm not advocating, because I got the sense there was a lot of people in the comment section thinking, oh, maybe I should do that. I'm not advocating that you go out and buy a second generator and a, a pair link. The only reason we did it was I already had the generator. If I hadn't had the generator, I probably would have went with buying a new inverter. 3,000 watts. Even though they're expensive, they wouldn't have been as expensive as the Paralink and the generator. You know, $300 for an inverter, let's say, would have been a lot cheaper than you know, maybe seven, dollars $800 set up here think about it it's a neat system i mean it's absolutely fantastic it's it's just really cool to have this but it may not be necessary so if you'll click this up next box it'll take you to video where i was welding with my paralink and the two generators so i hope i can inspire you to really analyze what you need so you can live your dreams thanks for watching